like crazy around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've got it, really. You're, you're really clever. I know pretty much what the rhythm track should sound like. But once that that's accomplished, I really leave it up to the top level uh, lead musicians to push themselves as far as they can. And <laughs> There's nothing better than watching a musician surprise himself. And when he, oh, that's really, what have I done there? That's the point, that's the magic of recording. We've got all the aggression that we want to know, coupled with the gentle thing on the, on the first three. Yeah. Plus my favorite thing was he says, well, I'm just guessing through it. I, it. I want music to create uh, an alternative or a, a counter atmosphere to what what's already existing. I think everything is a labyrinthine existence that we live. And so that it makes sense for me to put together elements in a song which wouldn't naturally be good bedfellows. If you hear an accident three times, it's an arrangement. It takes on a different context entirely. Pieces of information that don't naturally gel well with each other. I always thought of um, the English singer-songwriter Morrissey as a, a sort of a, a sexual Alan Bennett, the British playwright. Because of his attention to detail, he'll take a small subject matter and make a very grandois statement of it. His last album, Your Arsenal, was produced, ironically, by Mick Ronson. And Mick sent me a copy of the tape, and I couldn't but notice that one of the songs on the album, I Know It's Gonna Happen Someday, was a kind of a parody of uh, one of my earlier songs, Rock and Roll Suicide. The suicide bit. Okay. Da, 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 da. Um, and so I sort of thought it would be fun to take that song and do it the way I would have done it in 1974-ish. Okay.